Father, this morning, I want to give you all the glory. May I truly decrease and let you increase in my life this morning. And may your word come forth with power that not only the women are blessed today, but even the men. Even the boys and the girls and the young adults, Lord, I pray you touch their lives. Lord, these words that I speak, may it be power in my mouth this morning. May it penetrate down deep in the hearts and the souls of your people. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Because this is not my word. This is not my plan. This is not my, I, I'm planning this morning. But Father, it is your word. Amen. Let your word do what it does in the name of Jesus. Amen. The most powerful word, sharper than any two-edged sword. Yes. That is able to divide between the soul and the spirit. Amen. The designer of the hearts of men. Lord, let your word move. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, and touch hearts, encourage, Lord, uh, and build up. In the name of Jesus, Amen. let your word take preeminence today, Lord, Amen. and let your name be glorified. Holy Spirit, take control. Amen. I come against any plan of the enemy in the name of Jesus. Amen. I come with this place into the power of the Holy Ghost. I pray, apply the blood of Jesus Christ upon every wall, every chair, every human being in the name of Jesus. Any plan of the devil to distract or paralyze it in the name of Jesus. I bring down every stronghold in the name of Jesus. And in the authority of the Lordship of Jesus. Let your name be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Good morning, church. Good morning. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Moses. Moses chose rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Moses. Moses chose affliction rather than pleasure. Moses was in Egypt, his home. Amen? Ancient Egypt. For 40 years, he lived in a palace. Amen? Moses lived in a palace. He was trained and educated in all wisdom and action of the Egyptians. Now, if you don't know about ancient Egypt, ancient Egypt is where civilization started. Hallelujah. They were skilled in science. They were skilled in all crafts. Hallelujah. The scientists have proven that the Pythagorean theorem which is geometry, was initialized in ancient Egypt even before it was discovered by the Egyptian building and planning the pyramids. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Even today, modern scientists is baffled by what those people did with their bare hands. Without the, without the technology of today, without the technology of today, without the machinery of today, but those people, even though primitive, ancient Egypt was the center of civilization. They were the first to write numbers. They invented the water, the hand irrigation. Instead of working with their hands, they discovered, they said, you know what, let us make the hand irrigation. So that will not labor well. Because you see, the Nile River was very, the, 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 the soil around the Nile River was very hard. The clay was very difficult. So they come up with these ideas. These people were smart. They know how to organize. They know how to orchestrate. Egypt was the center of civilization. Egypt was the center of education. Moses was found in the midst of all this. But the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 25 that Moses chose suffering over pleasure. Moses chose to come out of that palace, out of that place of comfort and good living for a place of suffering. Why? Why would Moses do that? Why would Moses forsake all of that for suffering? The human being is prone for comfort. We try to make our homes comfortable, make our beds comfortable. Amen? So no human being wants to suffer. If you, if you do a survey right now and ask, who here wants to suffer? Yeah, who here wants to beg for, I mean, for their bread? Who here wants to live in poverty? Nobody will want to do that. But Moses, for some reason, chose rather to suffer affliction with the people of God 
And the Bible said, than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Why? Let's look at Exodus chapter 2. Amen. Exodus chapter 2. We are presented with a woman called Jekumbed. Spelled J O C H E B E D. Pronounced Jokumbed. A woman called Jokumbed was announced in Exodus chapter 2. A woman conceived and bare a son. And when she saw him that he was godly child, goodly looking, beautiful, he hid him for three months. Why would Jokumbe do that? She already had two kids. She already had two older children, a boy and a girl, Miriam and Aaron. Because there was a law that was passed in Egypt. A law said every male child that is born to the Israelites should be killed. Why would they do that? Because the Israelites were getting stronger and they were multiplying fast. Because the Egyptians were smart, they think, you know, let's look 10 years from now. These people will be more than us, they'll overpower us, and they can take over our land. So let's put a stop to that right now. It's just like the, the government of America say they're going to make sure no more black babies are born. No, no more Spanish. The Spanish are getting too much. Let's make sure they don't born anymore. Same thing. Hallelujah. And they start killing this male child. But the Bible says the midwives fear God. And the midwife says, you know what? We don't want to kill these children anymore. We don't want to kill these children. They refuse to kill the children. And the Bible says what happened is that Pharaoh heard about that and he made another decree. Pharaoh made a decree and says that the people should, when they found an Israelite male child, they should put the child in the river. Amen. And so that was the Lord then. That is why Jokey Ben hid the child for three months. She chose life. That was the hardest thing for her to do. Today, it's easy to kill a baby. It's easy to abort a baby because it's an easy thing. In those days, for Jokube, it was an easy thing for her too. First of all, she already had two kids. What, what does he have to lose? Secondly, it's a law. It's not a fault. But she chose rather in a difficult situation to save the baby's life. Amen? You know, she risked her life. She should have been killed if caught because she completely disobeyed the law of Pharaoh. But when the baby was three months old, she was unable to keep this child anymore. Now the baby can cry louder. A three month old baby cry is different from a newborn's baby cry. They have stronger vocal cord. They can cry louder, they want to move around, they want to do things. She can no longer hide this child. So she come up with a plan, say a plan. Yes. She orchestrated a plan. You know, people think that Joe Ben just took this baby and dumped the baby in the Nile. No, she knows. You see, the Nile has different tide. There is low tide and high tide. If she, if she was smart enough, you know she put the baby through the low tide. Because so that that basket can go quietly, softly. And she made sure she filled the basket with bulrushes. So that even if the basket hit a stone, there will be no trauma to the baby. Oh, she planned this well. Yes, she planned it. That is why she put Miriam to watch because she knows somebody will discover this child. This child is going somewhere. The mother knows. Why would she go through all that? She knows. She knows the time Pharaoh's daughter come out to play in the river. She knows. She understands the system. A mother has to be planning well for their child. 